What's up guys, Antoine Webb here from Culture Matters. We're here today with Carrie Hayes from Cross Country Mortgage and we're gonna go over the top 12 things not to do when obtaining a mortgage loan. Take it away, Carrie. All right, well, number one first thing that we say may sound simple, but do not change jobs. We have to verify your employment the day of closing, basically. Okay. So we verify the employment that comes in. At the end of the day, if you're no longer employed there, we can no longer use those funds. So okay. do not change your job until we're done closing. Okay. Okay. Next thing is do not change your pay structure. If you're a W-2 employee, but you're going to move over to 1099 income, wait. Don't do it. That can actually hinder your approval. 1099 income, it's considered business income. Most people actually need two years tax returns and consistent 1099s to actually apply for a mortgage. So if you're W-2 going to 1099, that's a bad thing. You have now put a two year waiting period. Depending on some of the loan products, some banks are a little different, but standard, it's normally a two year waiting period if you're gonna go from a W-2 to a 1099 because you're now considered self-employed. But don't change your pay structure. If you're commissioned, stay commissioned. If your salary, stay salary. Whatever we approve you on, that's how we want to keep it until the loan is closed. Absolutely. Next thing is do not apply for new credit. This is the biggest one. Do not open a new credit card. Do not apply for new credit. Um, if it is the holidays and it is the best sale, you're going to get 80% off by opening this credit card, well, you're going to actually have to pay 80% more because you cannot open new credit. Any new inquiry can actually lower your score. And lowering your score can result in getting a, a, a not a advantageous interest rate. Mm. Um, so make sure that you don't apply for new credit. If you do, wait till after closing. Mm. Okay. Do not change marital status. Now I know that may be hard in today's age. Do not change marital status. I know this may sound like a crazy one as 12 steps not to do, but the moment you do this, um, even if you're the only one who is on the loan, we now are going to require extra documentation such as a divorce decree. Um, if you're going to have to pay alimony, if right. there's children involved, there's your child support. So there's a lot of factors that will then come into a, that will come into play that will that can affect the, the loan negatively. Gotcha. Next thing is do not deposit do not sorry deposit non-verifiable funds. This means if a friend of yours gives you ten thousand dollars cash and they're giving it to you to purchase your home, that friend has to be able to supply you with what's called a gift letter. That gift letter is going to state where those funds come from. We will need to verify where he got the ten thousand from if it's going to be a deposit. So you got to make sure that wherever the money coming from is a verifiable place. Gotcha. So even besides gifts, but let's say it was your own money. Let's say you have a side job right. and you collect cash. If you can't verify where the cash comes from, we cannot use it to apply for income, or we can, we cannot use it to use for funds to close. Gotcha. Okay, it has to be verifiable funds. Um, do not dispute any item on your credit. Now, this means that there's some things on the credit that you do not like. There cannot be any open disputes. Now, disputes can be settled. So if you had disputes and you close them and they're settled, that's okay. But you cannot open a new dispute because most loan programs require that all disputes be closed. Next thing is do not charge up your credit cards. Now, I know you see that nice leather couch. I know you see that amazing bed set. That's right. I know you see the wood floors that you want to put in, the light fixtures, that, that moment of like, oh my God, we're almost there. I see right. so many things I want to put in my house. No. This is a no. Do not charge up the credit cards. But when, what I mean by that is you cannot add more to the cards because that then changes your minimum payment. Mm. If your minimum payment changes, your debt to income ratio changes, mm. which can move you to not being qualified. So charging up the credit cards has a negative effect on your on your debt to income ratio because it will increase what the credit card companies require for your your uh, minimum more your, your minimum monthly payment and what they report to your credit. So if you do charge them up and we will pull your credit um, the day before closing okay. to find out if everything is still approved if there hasn't been anything added. If we do see that it's been added, we're going to have to redo the loan, Re not redo but recalculate the loan, and hopefully it does stay approved. If you did, but if not, the loan can be you know the day before closing not approved because the cards were charged up. Okay. So if you have to move in the house that day and sleep on the floor, that's the idea. That's the idea. In a nutshell, that's that's unfortunate. That's what you have to do. Um, you cannot charge it, but if you have cash, you want to pay out of pocket, nothing to do with credit, by all means, shop away. If it's someone else's credit card, not in your name, by all means, shop away. But if it's in your name, 
it's going to affect your credit or anyone that's on the loan itself. Now, remember, don't go using your wife's credit card and you be a co-signer because you still aren't responsible. So make sure it's not in your name, okay? Yeah. Um, next thing, do not let your driver's license expire. Trust me, I know we all get the letters in the mail. I think we get them about 45 days before they expire. They allow us to actually pay now via mail. Some of us can do it that way. I know the DMV can be hectic, can be annoying, but if you know your driver's license is going to expire, please, all documentation must be up to date. Okay. Do not skip any payments on current bills. Now, almost a no-brainer, right? It's, it's, it sounds like a no-brainer, but late, especially if it's credit, can negatively affect your credit once again. Late will probably be one of the biggest point killers when it comes to credit. One late, you know, I've seen 20 points, wow. sometimes more. So it's a big difference when you're late, especially depending on the type of loan that you're late on. All right. Now, do not spend money from your checking account or savings account that is used for the down payment or closing costs. This is very imperative. If we get, we're going to need to verify the bank statements with at least three days prior to closing because we're going to need to verify where the funds are coming from okay. and that the money is in the bank account and that there hasn't been any unverifiable deposits. So if we get a bank account that you first sent us that had all the money in there, but the day before closing, you send us the we send us the updated statement and the money is not there, we then can't use that bank account because there's not enough funds in the bank to secure the loan. So we say do not spend any money from that. Once you know what you once you save it, keep saving. Yep. But spend smart, don't spend unnecessarily. You can spend, but don't spend unnecessarily and, and make sure that whatever is in there when you are qualified, it's either greater or at, or, or at the same. Um, do not apply for any other loans or properties. Now, there's a system called MERS, M-E-R-S. We will check it. Okay. It's a requirement. It will tell us if you have another loan application out there and you're trying to purchase another house. Gotcha. Do not, do not, do not do that. So one at a time. One at a time. Must be done one at a time. And, last but not least, do not put any gifts. Now, that goes back to one of these about non-verifiable funds, but this can be non-verifiable from your own work Gifts are something that you're going to receive from your friends, family, close relatives um, in a form of a deposit or cash deposit to go towards your down payment. Certain programs require uh, only only allow you to put down either three or six percent, depending on the, the, the loan to value ratio and the loan program. But do not put any gift funds without talking to your loan officer. If your loan officer has already given you the instruction on how to proceed with a gift, which means you need to provide a gift letter and also the place that the gift, the, uh, the bank statement showing that where the gift is coming from, at that point in time you can do it. But make sure you talk to your loan officer first about their specific procedures that they have at their bank. And this will allow you to be able to deposit any type of gift that's in there. Once again, all gifts must be verified. There's only a few um, ways that gifts aren't verified and the only ones would be that I'm aware of at this point are weddings. Um, anyone that's recently married or anyone that's getting married, the beautiful part about this, and kind of segue about the 12 things I have to do, but great thing about gifts are if you're getting married, um, there's a great way to use all the money from there as a gift. And it doesn't have to actually be verified because you're getting it because of your marriage. All you need to do is supply a uh, your marriage certificate, the gift, uh, the invitation mm -hmm. for the wedding, right. and the bank statements and all the a picture and copy of all the checks and a bank statement showing all the money that was deposited. Now, there's a little more detail. You go into that in more detail when we talk to your loan originator, but that's just the surface of it. But these are 12 things not to do. Now, with me, the main thing is we'll go over these 12 things in detail. We'll talk, and once I understand that you understand it, we sign a contract. That's how serious these 12 things are are not to be done. You must sign a contract just stating that you won't do these. And it's not a contract for me. It's not a contract for the bank. It's a contract for you. This is a contract that you're giving yourself to state that you're not going to do these things because, once again, this is probably the biggest purchase or if not the most important purchase of your life. So we want to make sure you get it when you apply, you get it quickly, and you get it on the first try. And awesome. this will help you to do that. So make sure if you come see me, um, you know, down at Cross Country in Homedale. We'll go over this. It's all part of my application kit that we offer. But this is one of the things that I'm very big stickler on. If you follow these 12 things, you don't do these, you do, do these, you don't do these 12 things, you will actually um, be able to acquire a mortgage 
a lot easier, uh, a lot easily, and you won't affect your credit or anything that can negatively affect the mortgage itself. But is that really about it? Twelve things not to do. The twelve imperative things to stay away from. Right here on the board, ladies and gentlemen. If you're curious what not to do, we just laid it out for you. I hope you got some amazing value from this video. Culture matters. Cross country mortgage culture matters. Carrie, where can we find you? You can find me at Cross Country in Home Down, New Jersey. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. All you have to do is type in Carrie Hayes, and that should pop right up. Guys, can't wait to see you on the next video. Have a great day, guys.